going on everyone john matrix here hope you're all having yourselves a wonderful day uh we're going to be jumping into the scp universe again for um today we're checking out the uh, scp 1425 star signals by the exploring series uh so yeah links will be down below in the uh, description to the exploring series channel and to the original video here that my commentary and reaction uh if you like this video of his please do go over there and give it a like and uh if you enjoy the man's content please go over there and give him a sub he makes a lot of great content for the sp universe as well as others uh we're doing this reaction live from our youtube members as you can see here but we'd love it if you guys come in hang out and join the discussions give your uh, thoughts speculations and uh, uh ideas interpretations on these as we're having our discussions as we go through these reactions live if you'd like to do that there is a join button down below the video as well as a uh, link in the description and uh, you can check out the YouTube membership benefit here. See if any of them have any interest for you. If you decide you want to take your support to the next level and help me out monetarily, uh, doing so obviously allows me to uh, concentrate more on doing these YouTube videos and getting more of this content out for you guys on a regular basis. Regardless, I just appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy day to help come in, watch the videos. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do, consider leaving a like and a sub as it helps me and helps the channel grow. But while all those shameless plugs done, we're going to jump into the video here again this is the exploring series scp 1425 star signals scp 1425 star signals i don't know why but automatically at the start here uh there's a a movie that came out either in the late 70s or early 80s from john carpenter called starman which is a really good movie. One of the few movies that he did that wasn't kind of like a horror movie. Um, but it's already giving me vibes of that. Just from this like picture and the name of it. Anyway. Self-help books, motivational seminars, life coaches, therapy, spiritual guides, and so on. Are all based around the concept of improving one's state of being. Mentally True. and physically. A large number of these techniques are crafted specifically to take money from gullible customers, while others are spread by those who fully believe in what they preach. Like so many concepts in our world, these ideas are taken into the SCP universe and amped up into the very strange and unusual. SCP-1425 is very much connected to a group of interest known as the Fifthis, or the Fifth Church which would hmm. be too much to go over here in addition to 1425. I'll let this video serve as an introduction to a later video on the fifth this then, and let's just discuss okay. star signals. Okay. Future faction info. SCP-1425 is a hardcover book with the words star signals on the cover, and the message on the back reading, Did you know that some stars in the sky are dead, but we still see their ancient image? True. With the best-selling novel, Star Signals, sold in four countries and translated into hundreds of languages, you too can tune into the celestial frequencies and then become like the stars. Interesting. It seems vaguely reminiscent of many other self-help books, although it's questionable how many would be interested in becoming like a star. I can't help but think about Elden Ring, you know, playing through Elden Ring recently with this, and there's a lot of, you know cosmic connections you know with some of the monsters being fallen stars falling star beast estelle the stars etc you know the elden beast being you know dropped down from a star etc etc so i don't know just kind of think about elden ring now anyway diving into the book a reader finds that it teaches a self-help process called the five-step star signal method designed to help them achieve their dreams and ambitions hmm Unlike many self-help books, however, there is no practical advice passed on, but rather the star signal method consists of mantras, positive affirmations, and overall essentially wishful thinking. The book is filled with various night- Is this, is, is, is this the, the secret? You know, the, the, did they turn the secret into an SCP? Is that what this is? Nightly rituals that must be performed in order to connect to celestial bodies through star signals. Which celestial body is used for the rituals is determined by a calendar printed at the start of the book, hmm. so that all practitioners of the star signal method 
will be focused on the same object at the same time. The anomalous effect, of course, is that the star signal method actually works. If an individual follows the guidelines presented in the book and focuses on a desire they have, reality will warp in order to accomplish the goal. Interesting. If someone wishes to win the lottery, they'll do so the following week. If someone wishes to have a new car, they'll soon be driving one. The person following the book doesn't even necessarily have to do anything extra aside from the rituals, as the effect will still succeed 80% of the time. So 80% of the time it works every time. So far, this seems pretty incredible. And by itself, I mean, yeah, it there's got to be a downside. A beneficial SCP. There's got to be a downside. But you know there's more to the story. Right. Like, there's got to be, like, some kind of curse that happens or... Eventually, you actually get sucked up into like a black hole uh, or into the what what used to be the star. I don't know. There's got to be something negative here. The book contains a number of mimetic triggers throughout the repeated rituals designed to slowly alter the individual's thought processes. Interesting. In the first half of the book, these are simply used to make the reader more agreeable to the overall concept of the star signal method. But the later chapters begin influencing the person's political and philosophical ideologies. 60% of individuals that read through the entire book begin exhibiting a condition known as Ohai Syndrome. Ohai. More on that later. Way well, there, bud. The Foundation believes that Star Signals was written and published by the Fifth <clears throat> Church, a cult whose membership consists largely of celebrities. Essentially... Oh boy, are we getting into Scientology in the SCP universe now? An SCP version of Scientology. These cult members are typically identified through a polished green stone worn as a necklace, bracelet, or other accessory called a star stone. Celebrity in measures their thetans. Endorsements and national media coverage quickly spread the word of star signals, and it became a bestseller within two weeks. We're given a number of excerpts taken from the book, curated to avoid mimetic triggers. Early sections are reminiscent of self-help books, although some of the language used is odd. One section discusses concentrating on the void inside of one's self, hmm. using it as a space to build your will until you hear music. It says this is not a metaphor. You should hear music, and to remember that nothing in this book is a metaphor. Another section involves repeating a mantra while focusing on a specific star. Some elements of this mantra have been redacted by the Foundation, but it says, Now is our time. Here is our space. We take your star. We hold your bonds. Repay your debt. It also says to not worry about memorizing the mantra, as once you say a specific mind-clearing word, you'll remember the mantra. If done correctly, the star will disappear. Interesting. What are, like, so are they somehow, like, trying to capture the energy essence of these stars to use in some way? And they're utilizing, like, some kind of like you said, some kind of mimetic trigger or whatever to like get people to help them do this. I don't know. Interesting. The sixth chapter discusses the concept of the fifth world, a vaguely defined idea that allows an individual to shape their reality and gives them true freedom. By the ninth chapter, things have gotten pretty strange, and so I'll read the complete excerpt. Some helpful advice that will save you in your coming weeks. Mirrors are for other people. Sit in a dark room by yourself for at least an hour per day. Move around as much as you're made to. If you feel yourself developing a soul, go outside immediately and follow the uh, direction of the smoke fuck. until you meet them. Always listen for the sound slan of Turwal plural Mugunthe. He said slan, so again, we're getting no Warhammer here. Love the Archons. When you hate them, they see you. The tenth chapter, titled You Cannot Wake Up, 
seems to consist almost entirely of the indecipherable language, which, if you can understand it, is probably not a good sign. Right. It would seem that the book is designed to take away a person's individuality and free will, combined with creating a sort of unified connection to the stars. Let's move on to the most interesting part of SCP-1425, mm. then. A log. So, it removes their free will and connects them with the stars. Like, I wonder, you know, is this again like a ploy for the church to, like, get more people to follow them, to join their cult? You know, some kind of evangelical thing they're doing to... Get more members, or is, does it go further than that? Because if they're actually like having people concentrate and wiping out stars, what's the like the end game? Are they like trying to just destroy all life in the universe? Kind of a thing. Is it somehow tied in with the Scarlet King? Are they like trying to bring him back somehow? Or, you know, I don't know. I'm just, you know, thinking of what other connections there could be with this. Anyway, of the events that occur to the most interesting part of SCP-1425, then a log of the events that occurred from the publishing date of Star Signals up to the point that the Foundation managed to shut the entire thing down. The first print run of the book was done on an unknown date and was reserved for members of the Fifth Church and their friends and family members. The second print run, with more widespread intentions, was completed on April 22nd. 2005, in three different locations, one in Texas, one in Maine, and one in England. A week later, a daytime talk show devotes an entire episode to discussing and promoting star signals. At one point, a guest, Hugh Laurie, makes a joke that the host's success might be due to the book's advice, adding, I hope nobody hates you. The host stares at the copy of Star Signals in their hands utters the F word, and remarks, it's finding the holes. What? Despite the controversy over the obscenity, or perhaps aided by it, Star Signal sales grow 50 times their current rate during Yikes. the following week. By the twelfth day after release, reports of mental illness begin to increase across the southwestern United States. A notable case involved a family of three in the city of Ojai, California who were arrested after a violent incident. The family were standing in a street several miles from their home, loudly discussing their surroundings using odd phrases, such as, I love how the buildings yeah, don't line is, up anymore. This is very strange already. We're only halfway through this, and this isn't even, like, about the actual group yet. That's a totally different video, so... Yeah. Also... This picture is definitely from like the 90s. Like, look at these cars. These are not <laughs> modern model vehicles. When approached by a bystander, the father assaulted the man with a pocket knife while the daughter shouted in an unknown language. Jesus. The bystander was being forced to repeat the phrases. And if he made an error, the father cuts a square shaped pattern on his face. The following day, the foundation begins to look into the family's case. And their I feel like that's bad PR for the book. Their connection to star signals. They learn that despite the widespread attention on the book, there have so far been no actual reviews or analysis of the text itself, apparently an effect of the mind-altering anomalies, so readers don't openly discuss the text. The next day, Foundation researchers conclude that star signals is responsible for the recent spread of mental illness, so why wouldn't they want people to openly discuss the text in there? I guess I guess it's because they they need to have them actually look at the book in order to be in, uh, affected by it, right? Not just talking about it. Huh. And classify it as SCP-1425. Since it's now classified as an SCP, this constitutes a massive containment breach. No shit. A plan is created, designated Protocol Afiukis, involving shutting down the publishing company, recalling every copy of Star Signals, and removing any mention of Star Signals from broadcasts. MTFs are dispatched to the three printing locations in Texas, Maine, and England 
where they meet armed resistance, but are ultimately successful. Foundation agents put out a fake press release, saying that the published form of Star Signals is both missing the 11th chapter and the 10th chapter is misprinted. All existing copies still on shelves are pulled, and consumers are given a $25 voucher if they return their copies. Another episode of that daytime talk show is broadcasted, and during an interview with the musician Beck, the host interrupts and looks directly into the camera, saying, You have to keep calm. Take a good deep breath. Remember what the man said. Stars may die in threes, but worlds die in fives. What? Like insects injected with maggots. What? The interview then continues as if nothing occurred. The Random? network puts out a statement that the host is suffering from exhaustion, but the Foundation is unable to locate them for detainment. Sixteen days after initial publication, the media has caught- Like, saying something like that is beyond, like, hey, this person was just tired. Like, you, didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't just say, like, stars die in three, but worlds die in five, like they're infected with maggots. Ha <laughs> ha! Sorry about that, I'm tired. I'm gonna take a nap now. Caught wind of the increasing number of individuals suffering from strange behavior. The mental illness is dubbed the Ohi Syndrome due to the family in California. Oh, and is unexplained among the general public. The foundation finds that amnestics can reliably cure Ohi Syndrome. More broadcasts are intercepted by the foundation featuring individuals affected by star signals discussing events in odd terms, or even discussing events that never occurred, such as Gandhi's public suicide. By day 17, 200,000 copies of Star Signals have been confiscated and destroyed by the Foundation, aided by another fake press release that some copies of Star Signals may have been contaminated by terrorists with ricin poisoning. Yikes. The Foundation works with the CDC and the NHS to treat bad. individuals suffering from Ohi Syndrome after a fake presentation claiming the syndrome is caused by a parasitic organism. They gather anyone they can locate exhibiting symptoms and administer amnestics before returning them to mental health facilities. Eighteen days after publishing, confiscation begins to slow down due to the fact that remaining readers are fully under the thrall of the text and have no intention of relinquishing their copies. The Foundation begins traveling door to door in hazmat suits in areas where they are most likely to find copies of the book under the rice and powder cover story. I feel like they're just going to get attacked, right? Three senators attempt to report President Bush to the FBI, claiming that he's an imposter, as the real Bush was executed months ago. The fuck? The senators suggest a live execution of the fake president on TV. Okay. Hosted by comedian Dana Carvey. What? An episode of American Idol is completely pulled from broadcast after Paula Abdul begins emitting large amounts of black smoke from her mouth. And host Ryan Seacrest urges fellow panelist Randy Jackson to take a deep breath in order to join her in hell. What the Jackson fuck? Jackson replies that he'll do that in his own home and that Seacrest should take off his mask. Seacrest responds by tugging on his cheek and saying that this is real. They'll have to rip it off of him. They finish by both what agreeing is going that they on? are alive with the words. Symptoms of Ohi Syndrome reach their peak on the 19th day, as many are found walking through the streets claiming to be following smoke. 400 people in the U.S. and 300 people in Britain are detained and treated by the Foundation. A final episode of the same daytime talk show is broadcast live, featuring the host alone on a dark set, as she proceeds to conduct an interview with Dave Chappelle, despite the comedian not being present. Twenty minutes Bro, in, the host is interrupted while speaking by a dark-gloved hand from behind, pulling her backwards out of sight amidst muffled screams. Foundation agents arrive shortly afterwards, finding an empty studio. By day 20 and on, less than 100 copies of Star Signals are believed to be out in the public, and a number of celebrities offer apologies for their erratic behavior. All personalities involved in televised incidents claim to have no memory of the events, 
and those that suffered from Ohai syndrome seem to experience no long-term effects. And over here, man, I've watched multiple videos on the physicism and their SCPs and stuff. No clue what the fuck they're... Dude, for real, these guys are out there, brother. Like, th this is like, you know, some kind of psychedelic meth whacked out something, dude. Like, Jesus, it's, it seems like so... Like, Paul Abdul starts admitting black smoke and Ryan Seacrest tells Randy Jackson, hey man, just you know, take take a little puff, it's fine. And then ran and then he's just like, nah man, I'll do it at home. Rip your face off. What? That literally sounds like some some kind of like crazy meth shit, dude. Like what? The foundation continues to monitor and handle like, you know, people turning into like, you know, Sniffing Epsom salts and like turning into zombies and, and shit like This is wild any mention of star signals and any previously undiscovered sufferers of the syndrome Planning commences to deal with the fifth church designated operation stargazer The final piece of the documentation we're given is from the director of project Ophiuchus Who explains why the project actually managed Ophiuchus? to work huh? He first says that the situation was much worse than they realized. So no this shit. would have resulted in a massive chunk of the population with reality warping capabilities working towards a singular goal. Yeah. Essentially restructuring our reality. Secondly, they really messed up in England, as they thought that they had more or less eradicated star signals from Britain. But during a royal parade on the 21st day, thousands of affected individuals shifted reality. According to him, for 45 minutes, London looked as if it had been dismembered and sewn back together. What? He says no one remembers it, and the Foundation possesses the only recording of the event. Third, he says that the Fifth Church actually began covering up much of their work for them, as once they realized that their goal of reshaping the world wasn't going to occur, they worked on protecting their secrecy. This is what prevented most of the witnesses of the strange events from actually remembering things, although the Foundation's not sure how. He also mentions that the cooperation of the SCC and Ofcom to allow them to kill broadcasts was very helpful, but the favor that the Foundation had to do for them is beyond even his clearance. Yikes. Fourth, he says that there were some gaps in Project Ophiuchus, and additionally that they ended up having to use another SCP to help with the project. He mentions having to utilize Project Lethe, a name you ah. might recognize from SCP-3002. Just watch that, that one. they're still dealing with the consequences. Strictly speaking, the two Project Lethe's. So, did this lead in on having to use Project Lethe, which is what caused her to break down, which is then what created a even worse scenario by having the. SCP essentially take over the world? We're not written to be one and the same, but that doesn't mean that they can't be. Finally, he says that the Foundation was betrayed in England by fifthest members that had infiltrated Foundation facilities. Interesting. He finishes by saying that he believes there to be more moles within the Foundation, and if there are any fifthists reading this, he asks if the phrase a star, a star means anything. This goes unexplained, but is possibly some sort of fifthest mental trigger that causes an adverse reaction. I was gonna say, yeah, it's probably uh, giving them a taste of their own medicine. SCP-1425 is interesting for multiple reasons, such as the connection to the Fifth Church, the details of such a large cover-up by the Foundation, the effects of a mind-controlling cult capable of warping reality, and the similarities to organizations in our world. Aside from the whole reality warping, speaking in tongues, and mind control, SCP-1425 isn't that implausible of an SCP. Like I said, most people are interested in improving themselves, and celebrity endorsements and media attention can go a long way to popularizing a product. True. We'll take a closer look at the Fifth Church in a future video, but SCP-1425 provides a lot of groundwork for their introduction.
In your current society, you are encouraged to be yourself, as if this is the key to making your desires real. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. You can't be anyone other than yourself. If you were to be someone else, you would still be you, and you would be someone who is someone else. Okay, now we're getting into that whole Ace Ventura line where if you were me, then I'd be you, and I'd use your body to get to the top. There's no getting out from under existence. Because you can't be anyone else, it stands to reason that if you want to change in your reality, it is the world that must change to suit you. You must mold your phenomenological landscape into uh, one where all your goals are achieved. Now imagine that place your desires are made real as a name. It's called the Fifth World. Interesting. Star Signals chap Chapter 6, Fifth World, Section 2, The Fifth Reason. Okay, well, that one was wild. So some kind of church cult has created some kind of self-help book that's an SCP that when you read it, it has some kind of memetic trigger that like alters your brain. Like it actually does, you know, if you do the ritual that it's saying it does, it actually will help you create the desires you want to, but it seems like they're also using that as a way of keeping you reading the book until you're fully indoctrinated and they want to get enough people together to do things to alter reality in a specific way. What that reality is and what they're trying to do seems to still be unknown, but obviously they're trying to spread it to as many people as possible um, with various celebrities, you know, and obviously this is kind of like the SCP version of Scientology. But that whole shit with, uh, you know, Paul Abdul and those celebrities, that was very strange and wild. And then I do kind of like the connection there where they're talking about Project Lethe and how that might have been an origin, potential kind of, you know, origin on how that project kind of got out of control because you know that girl got overused and overtaxed and overstressed you know having to try to correct a lot of the issues that happened with this and that led to that thing happening which is a video that i'd already discovered so i don't know this one was wild but we're definitely gonna have to do a follow-up on the fifth church to see learn more about them and their fa and them as a faction they definitely seem very out there but i want to learn more about them and what their really goals are and etc 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 so um but yeah that's gonna do it for this video guys uh this was uh scp 1425 star signals by the exploring series uh do me a favor links are down below in the description if you enjoyed this video of his click on that link uh go over there and give this video a like if you enjoy the man's content give his channel a sub he makes a lot of our content for the scp universe as well as others um as you can see we've been doing this reaction live here for uh, my youtube members we would love to have you guys come in here and join us and join in the discussions give your two cents hang out etc etc if you'd like to do that there is a join button down below the video uh, as well as a link in the description uh, check out the youtube membership benefit tiers see if any of those have any interest for you if you uh, decide you want to take your uh, you know support for the next level and help me out monetarily doing so obviously allows me to uh, you know, concentrate on creating YouTube content for you guys on a regular basis and getting more of these videos out for you guys regularly. Um, with all that said, though, I just appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy days to hang out, watch the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider leaving a like and a sub because it helps me and it helps the channel grow. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you guys on the next one.